that will stand the most firm against the Dajjal. When the Dajjal will come, Bani Tamim will be those who will strong, the firmest against them. Now, what, did, what is required for you to go against the Dajjal? What do you have to have that is strong? Your Tawheed. Your Aqeedah has to be sound to deal with them. Otherwise, those who are, you know, not really on their Iman, they will believe him and follow him. You must be a strong believer. Bani Tamim. Secondly, so at some point, some people brought the Sadaqah which were brought from Bani Tamim. And the Prophet ﷺ said, these are the Sadaqat of our folk, our people. Meaning he referred them to himself alayhi salatu salam. Thirdly, Aisha used to own a slave girl that was from Bani Tamim. The Prophet ﷺ said to her, emancipate her. Verily she is from the descendant of Ismail. Emancipate her, let her free. She is from the descendants of Ismail alayhi salatu salam. Because of these three instances, Abu Huraira loved Bani Tamim. So Bani Tamim are actually people of virtue, not what they claim. So these are the ways with which we refute their statements. طيب. Now that does with the idea of Sheikh Muhammad ibn al-Wahhab and whether he is a good man or not. Uh, and we already explained that they don't like what we're saying, but we still have to mention the information for them. And Allah is the one who guides. Why do we differ with them? What did he call to that they didn't like? Who can answer me? There are many things, but you can give me one answer. What is one thing he was calling the people to which they were not really entertaining? And that caused conflict. Without a doubt. Tawheed al-Ibadah. Okay. Specifically. Visiting graves. Well, specifically traveling to graves. Because you can visit the grave. There's nothing wrong with you. Actually, it's a sunnah to visit the grave with what intention? To make dua for the deceased. Not to make dua to him. Make dua for him. Oh Allah, forgive him. Don't say, oh, ask Allah to forgive me. This is how they, you know, they went there, got confused. They didn't know who's supposed to speak to who. Instead of them asking Allah to forgive him, they asked the dead man to ask Allah to forgive them. Ajib. A living person asking a dead person. You know your affair, but you don't know his affair. Maybe they moved him. Maybe he's not there anymore. Maybe he's burning down there. I mean, come on, there are so many possibilities, right? And many of these shrines which they have actually don't have the people they claim in there. They just build a shrine and, you know, they make a man stand there. He collects money from the people and there's no one there. Cockroaches maybe. And people are asking cockroaches for help besides Allah. That's, what hap that's what's happening. Misconceptions about Islam. He called them to abandon the idea of, you know, packing your clothes. And you remember now, they weren't going no khuruj and awda, you know, exit visa, and passports and all that. A man would get on his camel or horse or a donkey and go some months traveling to visit a dead man in the grave, hoping he would fulfill his need. While he could have stayed at home and said, Ya Allah, and it would have been over. Subhanallah. That's what happened to them. That's what the Muslims were doing and he tried to stop them. طيب. Forget about what he was saying. Forget about what they're saying. Let's see what did the Prophet ﷺ say. Now if anyone hearing me has a problem with what the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ said, then he is almost outside of Islam. If he has a problem, he doesn't like what he's hearing because he goes against what he likes to do, then he needs to reconsider whether he is still a Muslim or he has left the deen. You can't. You cannot dislike anything which Allah revealed. Anything. Even sisters. I know you don't like your husband having a second wife and you may dislike the idea because of jealousy, but disliking the idea, the actual teaching of Islam which Allah revealed, no, 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 no. You got to like it. Yes, you have that, that jealousy in you, the nature, no one will deny it. Even, they deny that even the Sahabiyat, the wives of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi had that problem. But they could never and they would never and neither can we say, well, I don't think this is a good teaching in Islam. It's not fair. That will, that will put you somewhere else. Okay? So I'm saying this because we will quote some hadith which they don't like. And they don't quote. And it, it bothers them. It bothers them deep within. But subhanallah, 
We love the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Who said? In a hadith which is agreed upon by Bukhari and Muslim, لا تشد الرحال إلا إلى ثلاثة مساجد المسجد الحرام ومسجد هذا والمسجد الأقصى. You should not undergo a journey except to one of these three masajid. The Masjid al-Haram, Mecca. Masjid al-Hada, he's saying his hadith in Medina alayhi salatu salam, his masjid. And al-Masjid al-Aqsa where? In Jerusalem. We all agree? Okay. You do not undergo a journey for, to any place. Now some people misunderstand. And they think this is only about masajid. And they think they can go for other purposes? No. Evidence. In the Musnad of Imam Ahmad, in her authentic narration, Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu said, I met Basra ibn Basra al Ghafari. And he said to me, Where are you coming from? I told him, From Turi Sayna, from the mountain of Sinai. He had went there. He told him, Had I met you before you went, you would have not gone there. Had I met you before you went, you would have not gone there. Verily, I heard the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, and he quoted the hadith. That means that the Sahaba understood that now the mountain of Sinai, what happened there? This is where Musa received revelation. And the intent was, this is a virtuous place. He used the hadith of the three masajid to explain that you don't travel anywhere with the intention of a special blessing because of the virtue of the place. So those who like to go to the Ghar Hira and all these thinking there's a special barakah, this is a bid'ah and an innovation which the Sahaba didn't do. And when one of them did it, he was corrected and rectified. So not only the masajid, if you were to undergo a journey for the worship of Allah, seeking nearness to Allah, it better be one of these three, these three masajid or stay at home. Stay at home. Don't go anywhere. This is not Islam. Being attached to physical locations and geographical locations and all this, it doesn't work. Even the, the shajara, shajara al bay'ah, where the Sahaba gave allegiance to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu when, when they saw Umar, saw that the people were going to pray there, he cut it. He cut the tree. Because it was starting to become a fitna. People now wanted to do salah in a place which they considered what? Virtuous. When Umar radiallahu grabbed the hajar al-aswad, what did he say? Inni a'lamu innaka hajar. Well, I know you're nothing but a stone. You don't benefit, you don't harm. Had I not seen the Messenger of Allah kiss you, I wouldn't kiss you. This is the aqidah of what? The Sahaba. They were very firm in belief in Allah. They weren't getting attached about everything. Now, yes, the Prophet ﷺ himself was a blessed man. And they used to seek blessings in the sense that Allah made them blessed with his sweat, alayhi salatu salam, with his saliva, with his hair. No doubt about that. No doubt about that. That Allah is the one who gives the blessings. But that was during his life, alayhi salatu salam. Concerning what happened after he passed away, this is an issue of dispute. But what about others? Did the Sahaba, did, did they go to Umar, uh, Abu Bakr, say, Abu Bakr, give us a, you know, a hair of your lihya? And they start, you know, wiping their face. I've seen, you know, this guy, Sheikh Hazim, uh, Nazim, Nazim. Allah, this guy, man. I, you know, you won't believe this Sufi, man. Sheikh Nazim, uh, billah, ya akhi, I, I, you know, I've been looking at the YouTube videos. It's crazy stuff. He's sitting with a bunch of people. You know, you know he's like a break dancer, by the way. He stands in the middle and they have all these people, you know, clapping and they got the drums and he goes like this. And then he orders the people with his hand, you come like this, they come kiss his hand, another, and then in another video,